Oh, namaste and again uh, welcome to our satsang. We are studying uh, Nirvana Shatakam, the beautiful uh, poem of six verses uh, composed or attributed to uh, Adi uh, Shankara, which is a, a song of liberation, a song about uh, what we speak of as moksha or uh, nirvana. So this is my fifth uh, class on Nirvana Shatakam. Um, we have all of the prior uh, recordings available, uh, posted by uh, Arunji. So please always feel free to go back and um, if you need to, or you choose to, to listen to the earlier um, talk so that you will have a sense of uh, continuity. And this is especially for those of you who you know, just uh, joining uh, the, the uh, classes. Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. This is the positive statement in each of the six verses. I am Atma, which is Chit. Chit Swarupa. Swarupa means which is of the nature of Chit, meaning awareness or consciousness, if you prefer. I am Atma, which is Chit, Chit Swarupa, because of which I am aware of my body, my senses, and my mind. I know my body, I know my senses, I know my thoughts. This is Chit, the light because of which I know body, mind, senses. I am Atma, which is Ananda, Ananda Swarupa, free from the limits of time. It is not born, na jayate, mriyate, va kadachita, as Bhagavad Gita tells us. It is free from the limits of time. It is not born, nor does it die, free from the limits of space. It is identical in all beings, in all, in all things. And it is the truth, the satyam, the truth, the reality of all that exists, even as clay is the reality or the truth of all things made out of clay, or gold is the truth of all forms made out of, out of gold. Chidananda is the truth, the satya of all things that uh, exist. Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. And so in the uh, last class, I focused uh, significantly on uh, Shivoham Shivoham, the last two words of um, the affirmative uh, line. And so what we need to remember, as I um, explained there, the word Shiva, as it is used by Shankara in this composition, has two meanings. There is the literal meaning of Shiva. In Sanskrit, we call this the Vachyartha, the literal word meaning, the direct uh, meaning. And then there is the implied meaning. In Sanskrit, uh, we speak of this as Lakshyartha the direct meaning and the implied meaning. So the direct meaning of the word Shiva is uh, Ishvara, the Lord, the divine. Ishvara who possesses, um, who's all knowing, is Ishvara is Sarvagya, Ishvara, he or she, it doesn't matter is Sarvagya all-knowing and uh, also Sarva Shakti has all powers or all potential to uh, create. So the literal meaning of Shiva in Sanskrit is Jagat Karana Ishvara. Jagat means the world Karana is the cause of the world, one who is Sarvagya all-knowing, Sarva Shakti Mahan and Omni uh, Potent. That's the literal meaning, direct Vachyartha. 
And so for you or I, uh, and in Sanskrit we use the word jiva for you or I, the human being, Ishwara for the creator. The literal meaning of, you, of uh, jiva, you or I, is of course the human being possessed of limited knowledge and limited powers. <laughs> we don't need anyone to tell us that. It's very obvious that our knowledge is limited and our abilities are also have, we each have our own um, limitations. So between a being, a jiva, a human being, possessing um, limited knowledge and limited abilities, alpa shakti, alpa jna, and a being, Ishwara, who is sarva shakti, sarva jna, alpa is limited, sarva is all, between these two, there is definitely uh, bheda. There is definitely a great difference. There is no identity between all knowing and limited knowledge, between all powers and limited um, powers. So you might remember, you know, an example I gave last last time: uh, a, a, a clay vessel with a capacity of a thousand gallons is not the same as a clay pot with a capacity of one gallon. Therefore, when the composer Shankara says Shivoham Shivoham, he's speaking at the speaking about the oneness, he's speaking about the identity at the not at the literal level of meaning of Ishwara and Jiva, but as at the implied uh, meaning. And the implied meaning of uh, Shiva is Chidananda. Shiva is Chidananda Rupa. That is the implied meaning of, of Shiva, Chidananda. And the implied meaning of Jiva, you and I, is also uh, Chidananda. So we are speaking of uh, identity or oneness at the level of Chidananda. Like the, like the wave on the ocean, <laughs> there is no uh, oneness between a gigantic wave and a tiny wave. Identity is in water. Different clay pots, identity is in uh, clay. So you or I, you are Chidananda, I am Chidananda in the form of a human being with a limited body and a limited mind. Shiva is Chidananda with, as I said, unlimited knowledge, unlimited uh, potential. The difference is obvious. <laughs> why we need uh, to be taught, why we need Nirvana Shatakam is because identity is not so obvious. We don't have to teach about different. Difference is obvious. Difference is what we look out into the world and we see that everything looks different. Every object is different from every other object. No one needs to be told that. But we need to be told Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham because that is not something we will discover just like that. One needs, the, this is a teaching. This is why we have a, a Guru Shishya uh, param, uh, parampara. So we must pay particular attention, as I said, uh, to the structure of that last line of each verse. Uh, it is not accidental that Chidananda Rupa precedes Shivoham Shivoham, because that then tells us where the identity is. And that identity is only in Chidananda Rupa. That's where I can say Shivoham Shivoham. That's where we can say we are one with Shiv, Shiva. If we say that, but we don't understand it, we don't understand the level, the, the, the implied level of, of these words, then it can be very, um, not only confusing, but it is very dangerous. It is very dangerous to say, you know, I am God, <laughs> or Ishwaroham. We don't, that's not what we mean. So we don't use the expression Ishwaroham. We say Chirananda Rupa. Almost, if we say Ishwaroham, we should always preceded by Chirananda Rupa to point out where that identity uh, is. There is a you know, very well-known, famous um, poem, Bhajan, um, Abhasaupadiya is jivanaka sabbhar tumhare. 
you know, absaupdiya. Now I, I give to you, I surrender to you, the, the distresses of my life, the strains of my existence, absaupdiya, is jivanaka, sabhar tumhare hathome, the burdens of my life I hand over uh, to you. So the, the human being, the jiva, can pray to Ishvara and seek Ishvara's uh, help. Because, you know, as the, the, the poem of Bhajan continues, Tujhe me mujhe me bas bheda yahi. Because uh, there is this difference between you and I, Tujhe me mujhe me bas bheda yahi. What is the difference? Tum narayan ho, main narahu. So I am a human being, a nara, male or female, and you are narayan. You are, you are the Lord. Main ho sansar ke haatho me, sansar tumhare haatho me. So I am in the world, Main hu sansar ke ho me. I am in the world, but the world is in, is in you. And therefore, you know, I, I, I lay my burdens in your hands. All this is very, this, this is fine. This is exactly what we are teaching. But what, we, what is missing is also chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham. So there is bheda, there is this difference, but there is a fundamental Abheda, a fundamental identity, non-difference also, and that we must, we must know. And this is uh, what uh, Nirvana Shatakam uh, is, is uh, teaching. So don't, as I said, you know, I don't want anyone to go away from understanding Nirvana Shatakam with the conclusion that there's no need for prayer um, uh, because, you know, Shivoham, uh, Shivoham. We have to under, understand well the depth of this uh, uh, poem. So we can pray to Ishwara, but we should also know uh, Chidananda Rupa, Shivoham, Shivoham. If we don't know that, then we miss something that is very fundamental about, about ourselves. Chidananda with wings is the bird. Chidananda with roots and leaves and branches, as I said, is the tree. Chidananda with four legs is the animal. Every form is Chidananda's uh, form. Every form is Ishwara's uh, form. And so to continue now, you know, I move on to uh, the second uh, verse which I will recite and then discuss uh, with you. Natya prana sanghyo navai panchavayu navasaptadhatur navapanchakoshah Vakpani padam na chupasta payu chidananda rupa shivu shivu chidananda rupa shivu Nacha prana sangyaha navai panchavayuhu nava sapta dhatur nava panchakosha navak pani padam nacha upastapayuhu chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham. So the first line of the verse 2 Nacha prana sangyo navai panchavayuhu. So again, we get, keeping in mind the basic structure of the poem, na. So it begins with the negation, 
and then of course ends with the affirmation. So prana sanghyo, panchavayu, these are traditional um, ways of ancient uh, Hindu medical uh, Ayurvedic descriptions of the human physical body. The five pranas, the five vital airs, panchavayu, the same. These are the, you have the physical body, and then you have, they have identified the fundamental physiological processes that take place in the body that sustain life. Classify these as, as uh, fivefold. And one can classify in various ways. This is a traditional um, classification from which uh, Adi Shankara is, is drawing. So what are these um, panchavayu or panchaprana? They are, first of all, prana itself, which is most basic, uh, respiration. This is the, uh, by breathing, we, we draw uh, oxygen uh, from the atmosphere. And then that oxygen, uh, that process of breathing and the drawing of oxygen then vitalizes the, the functioning of the physical body. So prana is uh, respiration and then apana, so that's the second. Apana is all of this, the, the systems in the body for excretion. And then uh, vyana, uh, circulation, uh, samana, uh, digestion, uh, broadly uh, speaking, and then finally udana. And you'll find in different uh, manuals, different descriptions or definitions of udana. In some of the texts, udana is described as the, the energy, the final energy that leads to the separation of um, the, the jiva from the physical body at the time of, um, at the time of death. So the five pranas are Prana, apana, vyana, samana, and um, udana. So, na pancha, na pancha vayu. These I am not. Again, the negation. These I am not because these are all processes belonging to the physical body. And of course, these are all processes of which I am aware. So you need to keep in mind, you know, where we started with the discussion, uh, which is the difference between the knower and the known, the seer and the seen. You know, I'm aware of my respiration, not in the same way that I might be aware of circulation, but it's a, I'm aware of my heart, <laughs> the primary organ of, of circulation. So I'm aware of all of the organs in my body that are intricately involved in these uh, physiological processes that um, sustain life. These are known, they, begin, they belong to the field of the, of the known. I am Atma, I am Chit Swarupa, the one who is aware of bodily uh, functions. So then we get uh, uh, another um, classification, Nacha Prana Sanghyo Navai Pancha Vayu, Nava Sapta Dhatu. Sapta Dhatu is again drawing, this, all these terminologies I said are drawn deep from ancient Indian uh, medical terminology. Sapta Dhatu. Um, these are the, the seven basic materials out of which the body uh, is made. This is how it was understood. Skin, flesh, bone, marrow, fat, nerves, saptadhatus. They, they regarded these as the primary constituents of the physical um, body. Again, na saptadhatu, I, these I am not because they belong to the realm of that which is known. They are objectified um, by, the, by the mind. Nava saptadhatur, Nava pancha kosha. Pancha again, five. Uh, kosha, five layers, or sometimes kosha is also translated as five sheets. Uh, again, pancha kosha is a, another classification of the a makeup of the uh, human being physically and, 
and mentally. It's called panchakusha. Now we have to be uh, uh, sort of uh, careful in understanding panchakusha. So also this is negation. Na panchakusha. I am not the. I am not the five pranas. I am not the um, seven dhatus, and I am not nava panchakusha. So a kosha is like a covering or or a sheet. You know, sometimes uh, if you think of the example of a sword fitting into a sheet, that's sh that sheet in which the sword fits is called uh, kosha. But when we use the word kosha um, in relation to Chidananda uh, Atma, we have to be uh, cautious because uh, Chidananda is not covered by anything. You know, sometimes we say, uh, uh, without thinking carefully, that uh, Chidananda is in the five koshas, like a sword in a sheet. It, is, it exists in these five sheets, so it's wrapped in. These are five layers in which the Atma, Chidananda Atma is wrapped. But Chidananda is not wrapped in anything. <laughs> Chidananda does not fit into anything. <laughs> So kosha uh, means a covering here, but it is not a covering because atma cannot be covered by anything, even by the seven dhatus or the or the uh, the pancha uh, pranas. So you know, just think about it on the basis of all that we have said. Can can um, can water be covered by a wave, or can clay be covered by by a pot. So what what is what do we mean? What is being said here in na pancha kosha? I am not the pancha kosha. The first, and I'll go through these uh, uh, quickly for you. The first is each one has a Sanskrit name. The first is anna maya kosha. Anna maya kosha is the first uh, sheet or the first uh, layer. So uh, Anna means food. So Anna Maya means made of food. That which is made of food um, is called Anna Maya, made of uh, food. And it's a term that is used for the physical body, the body that we, we see, we touch. It's called Anna Maya made of food, because this is exactly what it is, you know, all through its stages from conception to death, from birth, janma to mrityu, it is nothing but food, right? The, the transformation or the modification of, of food. So annamaya means made of, made of food. Anything, anything eaten is anna. Anything eaten is anna, so body is annamaya. But it becomes annamaya kosha. It becomes annamaya kosha when it is confused for, or when it is taken for chidananda atma. So kosha there, kosha, when we add the word kosha to annamaya, we are actually pointing out to one particular kind of misunderstanding, one particular expression of avidya. It's called, and the word kosha points to that. You know, so what is that? What is that avidya? What is that uh, error in, in understanding? Just think about it uh, in this way. I have something edible on my plate. So let us say, you know, this morning for breakfast, I had some toast on my, on my plate. And when I look at the toast on my plate, I don't take it to be Atma. I don't take it to be myself. It is an object there on a plate uh, before me. 
But the moment it is eaten, you know, it is digested, then it becomes part of the body. I take it to be myself. So that which is not self becomes self because it is eaten and it is digested and it, is, it forms part of the uh, physical body. That is, that is, when I do that, when I commit that error, then it becomes Annamaya Kosha. I am taking Annamaya, that which is made out of food, to be myself, to be identical with um, Chidan and uh, um, Atma. So, Nava Pancha Kosha. So this identification, wrong identification of Chidan and the Atma takes many forms. I am, I am black. That's Annamaya. That's a feature of the Annamaya, of the body, which is a, made out of all of these nutrients. I am white. And because of this, you know, I hold myself to be superior to others or I regard myself to be inferior um, to others. I am blonde. If I identify with my hair, I'm identifying Chidananda, <laughs> the infinite Chidananda, the timeless Chidananda that we have seen with a quality of the body. And because of which, you know, we end up with all of these hierarchical ordering of human beings into systems of inferiority and, and superiority. And we end up with um, racism and all of its um, problems. But this is also part of the reason. This is where also part of the, um, the cause. So I am brown, blonde, I am brunette, I am, I am bald, I have a full head of hair. You know, the body becomes a kosher. It does not actually cover the atma. Please, this is my, it doesn't cover the atma, but it's one kind of mistake that one makes. And then it becomes annamaya kosher. It obscures, it, it covers in the sense of covering through avidya, covering through uh, uh, ignorance. It's the same, you know, if I identify so much with an illness of the body, then the body also becomes annamaya. Uh, kosha. So that's the first kosha. The second is uh, pranamaya kosha. We've seen that before. Pranamaya kosha. So what is pranamaya? Again, just remembering what we discussed. Prana are the energies. Pranas are the energies that function in the body. You know, begin again, the five we spoke about. Prana, apana, vyana, udana, samana. So pranamaya is just descriptive, like annamaya is just descriptive. Pranamaya is just descriptive also. It says that in the body, these are the basic energies that vitalize the, this annamaya kosha. This annamaya, this, this uh, form that is made out of food is vitalized by uh, these five uh, processes. Respiration, excretion, circulation, digestion, and, and so on. So pranamaya is descriptive, but then pranamaya becomes kosha. It becomes a kosha, it becomes a covering, it obscures when I identify chidan and the atma with it. And I say, you know, I identify hunger, I identify thirst, I identify um, uh, an improper functioning of one of these uh, systems. I regard that to be uh, the swarupa or the nature of Chidan and the Atma that is free from all of, all of that. And then the third is uh, Manomaya. So Manomaya is what we uh, speak of as the mind covering. So there is Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, the mind um, covering. We spoke about, you know, Manaha or mind at the very beginning. Because in, uh, Shankara opened this Nirvana Shatakam with that line. Mano buddhi ahankara chittani naham. So there he said, Mano, Manaha na aham. I am, I am not. So the Mano Maya is um, that thinking process. We, we had dis discussed it there. 
Now, thinking process that is characterized by a vacillation, um, sankalpa, vikalpa, you know, doubt, doubt, uh, doubting processes uh, is what we speak of as as uh, manaha or mind. But also, you know, I, I, um, if I say I hate, I am envious, I am jealous, I am bored. You know, I'm identifying Chidan and the Atma with a condition of the mind, with a condition of the manaha. Manaha. And then that's, that's uh, avidya or, or, or ignorance. So because Chidan and, uh, as he says before, you know, we are aware of the mind, we are aware of all of the activities and movements of the, of the uh, mind. So that's the third um, uh, sheet. So just keep in track for you. Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vigyana Maya. So remember, we dis discussed before the difference between Manaha and Buddhi, mind and intellect. Mana is mind, Buddhi is intellect. Another word for Buddhi here is Vigyana, Vigyana Maya. So that's resolute thinking, decisive um, thinking. And that also I am not because it's 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 a, it's, it's also a, a quality of the of the mind. So if I walk into a room and I see a beautiful arrangement of flowers, and I begin to think, as we do now, you know, I begin to think, I wonder if this is real or if this is plastic. <laughs> We all struggle with that now because of how the plastic, how well made these um, silk or plastic is very sad in a way, but we all have that doubt sometimes when we see a floral arrangement. Is it real? Is it natural or is it artificial? That's manaha. So as long as I am deliberating between one or the other, that's called in Sanskrit mana, mind. And then when I go and I touch it, I feel it. And I, uh, I'm clear that, you know, this is a natural flower that's buddhi, intellect, vijnana. So that's the fourth um, uh, sheet. And then finally, the fifth is what we call anandamaya. Anandamaya, or translated as the, the pleasure, pleasure sheet, or happiness um, sheet. But even that is not, because the Ananda Maya, Maya is that covering, uh, it, it points to the happiness that is fluctuating, comes and goes. You know, like someone says, you know, today I am happy. Today I'm a happy person. Which means that, you know, yesterday I was not, and tomorrow I may, I may not be. Or today I am, you know, I'm feeling good today. It means I was not yesterday or I may not be. So that transient um, form of pleasure is called Ananda Maya. It is made. It is finite. Maya points to its finite uh, quality and it becomes a kosha. It becomes also a form of a vidya because it, it, one always thinks that one is uh, deficient, one is inadequate, uh, one has to strive and struggle for for uh, happiness. So once one we when we add the word kosher to all of these, then uh, this points to different expressions of ignorance, identification with the body, uh, annamaya, identification with the physiological processes, identification with the mind, and identification with uh, transient uh, forms of uh, pleasure or, or uh, happiness. So please keep that uh, in mind uh, when we think of uh, what, what the kosher is. The first part of each is, is just a statement, annamaya or pranamaya, but when we add kosher, it becomes a particular expression of avidya, it becomes a particular expression of uh, ignorance. So, Nava sapta dhatur nava pancha koshaha nava pani padam nacho pastapayu chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham. So, navak. 
Uh, it comes now to the organs of action in the body. So you have the sense organs, you know, the five sense organs, and now the organs of action. It's a very comprehensive poem. He doesn't leave out anything. It's following a very nice and neat um, structure here. Nawak, Nawak, I am not the organ of speech. It's an instrument. Nawak, I am not the organ of speech. Napani, I am not the arms, the hands, nor my feet, nor the feet. Upasta payuhu, the organs of excretion and reproduction, I am not. Chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham, because all of the organs of action belong to the physical uh, body. So now I want to just remind you, very important, uh, because I'll keep coming back to this point. It's a very important point that although we say, and he is saying, Navak Pani Padam, I am not the organ of speech, I am not the hands, I am not the feet, Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham, I am Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. But as I um, clarified earlier on, we can say, the organ of speech is Chidananda. The hands are Chidananda. The feet are Chidananda. But Chidananda is not a hand. <laughs> Chidananda is not a organ of speech. Chidananda is not a pair of feet. Chidan because Chidananda is everything. It is like, it would be wrong to say that clay it is correct to say a clay pot is clay. It would be wrong to say clay is a clay pot because clay can be anything made out of clay. The potential of clay exceeds the single form of a clay pot. So the, the clay pot is clay, but clay is not a clay pot. That would be uh, speaking in a way that makes clay finite. So if we say, we can say the hand is Chidananda, but we should not say Chidananda is the hand because Chidananda is everything. All is Chidananda. Sarvam, as uh, Chandogya Upanishad says, Sarvam Khalu, Sarvam Khalvidam Brahma, Idam Sarvam khal, Khalu Idam Brahma. Everything is Chidananda. Everything is uh, Chidananda. So we need to uh, keep that in mind throughout this uh, poem. If we don't, as I said, then what do we, we simply end up with a dualism. Chidananda and everything else. And that's not proper understanding. That's not uh, proper uh, wisdom. Then uh, verse three. Name Dweshadao Name Lohamu Name Dweshadao Name Lohamu Mado Neva Me Neva Matsar Yahavaha Dharmo na chartho na kamo na moksha Shidananda Shivoham Shivoham Shidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham Name Dvesha Ragaha Name Lobha Moha Mado Naiva Me Naiva Matsarya Bhava Nadharmo Nacharto Nakamo Namoksha Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. So now the first line 
न मे द्वेष रागव द्वेष एंड राग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टर्मिनोलॉजी यू वुड फाइंड यूज्ड वेरी ऑफ्टन इन द भगवत गीता आई एम नॉट द्वेष ए डिसलाइक आई एम नॉट राग ए लाइक राग मीन्स स्ट्रॉन्ग लाइक द्वेष डिसलाइक अपोजिट्स राग एंड द्वेष so raga strong like dvesha strong dislike why 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 does shankara uh, select this of because you know there are many mental uh, qualities that he could identify to say i am not but he chooses here in this verse to highlight raga and dvesha likes and dislikes we all have likes and dislikes we all have ragas and and dveshas these are are formed in the very process of growing up you can't grow up as a human being without forming likes and dislikes ragas and dveshas these are influenced by you know the culture nationality family personal profit personal preferences um they change you know as we grow up the likes and dislikes ragas and dveshas in childhood are not ragas and dveshas um as we grow uh, older and these are not abstract ragas and dveshas have specific objects i like this thing i like this person i dislike this thing i dislike this person this group of people you know there is very uh, every like has an object every dislike has an object it's not simply i like and i dislike i know <laughs> what i like and i know what i uh, dislike so they're very um uh, specific and they can become so so powerful that you know they define who we are uh, you know a person perhaps could be summed up as the as the totality of his or her ragas and uh, and dveshas likes and and dislikes i am happy you know when my in the presence of those things that i like and i am unhappy in the presence of those things that i i dislike i become i identify chidananda atma with my likes and i define myself and def- identify chidan and the atma with my likes and and dislikes so i say aham ragi i am dislike aham dveshi i am this this is like you 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 know you you can think of how you know likes and dislikes so deeply form us how we are conditioned by by these likes and dislikes that that begin to be formed even from our childhood some of them can also be very uh, destructive because you know we we might privilege you know the group to which we belong the cultural group the national group uh, the race group if we use that terminology to which we belong and then it means i negative wise what i like then the opposite i exclude or i um i i negative wise so i become when i am in the grip of these likes and dislikes my responses become very conditioned impulsive controlled by these and those who understand <laughs> those who understand our likes and dislikes easily control us also <laughs> you know so we are in the control of our likes and dislikes ragas and dveshas and those who know our likes and dislikes will exploit them can easily exploit them also to uh, control to control us so this is why you know the bhagavad gita returns again and again to this issue uses this terminology of likes and dislikes indriya indriya syendriyarthe raga dvesha vyavasthita tayor na vasham agachet tau hyasya paripanthina uh, sri krishna says in one of the verses of bhagavad gita this is this is the um the third uh, chapter verse 34 you can uh, look at it 
interesting that when the Bhagavad Gita speaks of likes and dislikes, it, it does not assume that uh, we will not have likes and dislikes. It doesn't assume a person, you know, the liberated person is a person who's completely free from all likes and dislikes. What it means is control over likes and dislikes, not being controlled by likes and dislikes, but achieving a certain uh, control. So he says, Tayoho na vasham agachet. Please do not come under their control. Um, these are, if they, when, they, when you come under their control, they become your enemies. They become your, your own likes and dislikes uh, become your, your enemies. So these are conditions of, of the mind. And again, we wrongly identify Chidan and the Atma with, with these. The, the structure again of this uh, first line is, is very important, uh, like the structure of the last line. Name dwe sharago. It is not that I don't have likes and dislikes, but I am not my likes and dislikes. And I should not identify Chidananda Atma with these. I am Chidananda Atma, Shivoham, Shivoham. I should not give up this great truth and identify myself with these, with these small like likes and dislikes. And knowing, so the question is, how does one gain mastery or control over these likes and dislikes? One does not become a victim of one's likes and, and, and dislikes. First, I, I think it's also becoming mindful of one's likes and dislikes, which we should all you know, we all have to reflect on our own social conditionings, how we have been formed, and what are the ingredients that have gone into the development of our likes and dislikes beginning from, from childhood. So that process of introspection, that process of mindfulness is very, is very important. We should question our likes and dislikes. We should subject them to critical uh, interrogation. So knowing and being aware of one's likes and dislikes, I think is the first step to gaining what, what, what Sri Krishna says, you know, Tayorna uh, Vashamagachit. Do not allow yourself to be uh, controlled uh, by these. But I think also that knowing what this great poem is teaching us, the great teaching here is the last line, Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. Knowing that I am Chidananda Atma, Shivoham Shivoham, is really the best. Understanding this, integrating this into one's way of being is in fact the best way forward for controlling likes and dislikes. If likes and dislikes is all that I regard myself to be, you know, if these define who I am, they're the, the most fundamental way in which I understand myself. It's very difficult to free oneself from their, their hold on one. I'm entirely in their control because I don't know anything else about myself. I am, that, I am the conditioned being. My identity is the, is the identity is conditioned by culture, by nationality, by family influences, and, and so on. But what this, what this great poem is, is pointing out is that there is an unconditioned truth about each one of us, which is Chidananda Atma, Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. So when I know myself to be Chidananda Atma, I think likes and dislikes take on a different perspective. They don't become as domineering or as significant as they would be if I didn't have this, this more fundamental truth about, about myself. <laughs> I'll try an, an, an analogy. <laughs> Maybe it's like all analogies, you know, they have their limitations, but let's give it a try, at least to, to illustrate the point that I, I want to make. You know, let, let us say that I am making an investment and um, I put all of my resources in very risky 
investments, right, uh, which are fluctuating every day as the market fluctuates. I have everything invested in because you know I want. I, I also want to have quick gain, so I pour everything into high risk um, investments. Everything that I have in a high risk investment, naturally. I am going to be in a constant state of anxiety because it's fluctuating, it's changing all the time. I have not, but I have nothing else. This is what I have chosen to do. But alternatively, if I distributed my investments differently and I put a significant amount of it into fixed return, safe and secure and fixed returns, and I have a smaller portion of it in the, in the fluctuating market. The fluctuations don't worry me so much because I have a solid, <laughs> I have a solid um, investment that is safe, you know, um, predictable and, and um, not subject to the vagaries and fluctuations of, of, of the market. So in, 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 in respect, in relationship to my steady um, predictable, safe, secure investments. I can deal much better with the fluctuating ones. It doesn't cause me as much anxiety as if it was all that I had. So similarly, when I own myself to be Chidan and Atma, Shivoham, Shivoham, I am not a victim. I'm not invested so much in my likes and, and dislikes. If a if uh, I'm in the presence of something that I dislike, it doesn't have the same, it doesn't resound in the same way in which it might, if that was all that I, it was all that I have. But to, to know Chidan and the Atma is to locate oneself in a deeper truth of one's being and to deal much better with the uh, fluctuations. It's like the ocean, you know. In fact, the Gita uses this, um, example of the ocean which at, at, it, at its depths it's still and, and calm the the waves are only on the surface <laughs> the waves are only on the surface at the depths there's always calmness there is uh, peace and so chidananda is the truth about oneself at the most fundamental um depths but one last point on raga and dvesha However, you know, whatever likes and dislikes we might have, there is one fundamental ethical standard that, that we should not transgress. While we can never free ourselves completely from, from likes and dislikes, likes and dislikes, we must always ensure that likes and dislikes are not contrary to dharma. And when I say contrary to dharma, it means they are not the sources of suffering, causing suffering to others. My likes and dislikes, okay, they are personal, they are idiosyncratic, but if I profess these, and if I act on the basis of these in ways that inflict suffering on others, then they are no longer harmless. They are no longer harmless. And this is why also, if I have likes and dislikes, but I know Chidananda Atma, I know that when I know Chidananda Atma, I know that I, I am one with every being. And, and my likes and dislikes become subject to compassion. Because the, the outcome of Chidananda, understanding oneself as Chidananda Atma, is compassion for all. They are just compassion for all. So likes and dislikes become subject to this virtue of, of compassion. But even if I don't know that, I'm saying that likes and dislikes should always be secondary to this fundamental ethical principle of compassion, of not inflicting suffering on others, of working for the well-being of others. This is what, you know, as Krishna says, loka sangraha me vapi sampashyan kartumarasi. Arjuna, whatever you do, whatever your likes and dislikes, make sure that you are always committed to the common good. Loka sangraha. That is, the, that is fundamental. The common good must always be in your, in your horizons. Likes and dislikes must not allow us to um, be unjust to others, to oppress others, 
to inflict suffering on, on others. So name dwe sharagao, name lobha mohao, madho naiva me naiva matsarya bhava, na dharmo na chartho na kamo na moksha chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham. Name lobha mohao, madho naiva me naiva matsarya bhava. So <laughs> it's already 11.37. Um, You've been very attentive. I can't, I hope. <laughs> um, and on Zoom, it's a little more difficult. <laughs> I've been teaching since last week um, in person. All of my students wear masks. And uh, John, you will understand, as I have understood uh, much better now, how much as a teacher, I depend on seeing the faces of my students. <laughs> so with the masks, uh, it's very difficult <laughs> to read their faces because you're always in the classroom when you're teaching you're always uh, adapting um, you know you have a prepared lecture but you modify that on the basis of reading the faces of of students it's very difficult to teach when there are no faces <laughs> teaching is a very personal it's a relationship every every class is a new relationship with um, students when you see their uh, faces and i think it's, it's, it's difficult both for them uh, who also don't see my face fully, and I don't see uh, their faces uh, fully as as well. So I I don't see all of your faces when I am speaking. So I have to assume that uh, you are um, with me. So uh, I conclude here. Thank you all for joining us for such thing, and um, I pray that you stay safe and that you stay. Well, we are in the midst of a very, very difficult um, time with this uh, pandemic, especially those of us who are older in body. <laughs> we are Chidananda, but Chidananda with bodies. <laughs> bodies that are subject to a uh, virus as, as well. So I pray that you all you stay safe and that you stay well and that you stay healthy until we uh, meet, meet again.